Hello again, after explaining what recursion is and taking some examples uh, of some uh, recursive functions, we've explained the Fibonacci and the um, factorial functions in the last video. Now we're going, to, we're going to learn about how we can do that actually in OCaml, how to declare, define and use recursive functions in OCaml. Basically in OCaml all we need to do, we've learned about um, functions in general in the last videos and in this video we'll learn how to use recursive functions and slightly more information about functions themselves but basically the main idea in OCaml to declare and use um, a recursive function is that we need to use the word rec R -E -C, for recursive in front of the function name so if we want for example to um, have um, a recursive implementation of the factorial function we can do it this way we say let rec fact for factorial n that's the integer n and then if n is equal to 0 if n is 0 then return 1 else return n times fact n minus 1 and just to uh, demonstrate that let me just um, load let me load our top loop yes as you can see here and then just copy and paste that you can see I'm using that comment over there and that which is also useful to learn so if I say fact 5 I get 120 yes uh, so in general that's that's how we use it we just use the word, word rec in front, of, uh, in front of the function name and we continue doing the function as we know recursively now we can actually use the pattern matching we learned about and we learned about in the, in the previous videos instead of using the if statement we can use the pattern matching but we are going to do that actually in our next function if you look here we are, if you remember now the definition of the Fibonacci function that the Fibonacci value of, uh, of a certain integer number n is the summation of the Fibonacci of the two previous numbers fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2 um, now if you look at this function this code over here we say let rec remember the keyword rec Fibonacci n and then if s if n is less than 2 or if you remember the definition from last video we said that if n is 0 or 1 then the value should be always 1 above if anything above the above that above 1 if anything more than 1 uh, ie 0 I'm sorry 2, 2, 2 or more then it's fib of n minus 1 plus fib of minus 2 notice now that that this is the function name that's the keyword rec and then we don't have to have parentheses here around the, the parameter as you can see um, and even you must have noticed by now even if, when we call a function we don't have to actually use the uh, f uh, 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 parentheses although if we want we can but that's not necessary if the function receives only one argument even more actually unless if we are using uh, tuples as we learned in the last videos uh, and for the functions themselves in general in, in OCaml you must have noticed that we don't actually have a return keyword like in Java for example and, and C we have return in OCaml we don't have to actually uh, use that instead actually the value of the whole body expression is impl implicitly that's what gets returned yes so it implicitly sort of the value of the whole body expression that's what actually gets uh, returned now for the Fibonacci function we can actually maybe if, if you look at my implementation here let me just minimize it so you can see it yeah, so that's for the factorial for, for the Fibonacci I have one implementation using the if statement so I can copy and paste that in, in our top loop and so we can experiment with it Oh yeah, I need to actually correct that and say here that's underscore one. Sorry, I was doing that in the background and forgot to do that. I need to do that for this as well. I'll do that later. But anyway, so that's my Fibonacci implementation, OCaml implementation. I paste it and it's working nicely. Now let me test it by, for example, I remember the the problem with this implementation, of course, that first thing is we can use pattern matching we'll use that in, in, in a minute and then remember the efficiency problem that a few things, or well, not a few things, a lot of things get get 
calculated more than once as the tree branches go back to the, to the last video if you don't know what this means but let me just paste that and then do it for example 6 yes to so the value is 13 if I say maybe uh, let's say 12 then the value is 233 now using the pattern matching what we can do is we can say Fibonacci X so let recursive for Fibonacci X so we can match X now with if it's 0 then we return 1 if it's 1 we return 1 if it's anything than that n i.e. n uh, in fact I should say maybe underscore i.e. anything apart from that then the Fibonacci <coughs> would be would do the recursive, recursive call of x minus 1 plus uh, x Fibonacci of x minus 2 remember by the way the issue with the negative numbers for both the Fibonacci and the, the um, the factorial function. So let me copy and oh, I don't have to actually, I actually have it here. So this is with the F statement for Fibonacci, this is with the pattern matching. Let me just correct this so the OCaml doesn't complain. So that's Fibonacci 2, defining it or declaring it with the pattern matching. We copy and paste that. Oh, it doesn't like something I think here. So let me just correct this. I don't know why it doesn't like it. But again, copy and paste. Now it's happy. So if we do Fibonacci 2 of 12, last time we got 233. This should be the same. But now it's with pattern matching. In fact, this form of pattern matching is so common that there's actually a special um, sort of format for it. If you look here, what happens is we can say let rec Fibonacci maybe equals function so notice that the variable has gone yes the parameter has gone and this match x with has o have also gone yes yeah? so we can get rid of that say let rec Fibonacci underscore 3 equal function and then do the pattern matching immediately that's just another form of doing it that's so common in Okamali if you see that that these two forms are actually equivalent so if we copy and paste that uh, again, I need to say the underscore 3, underscore 3, copy and paste that, shouldn't be a problem at all, and then if we apply 12, uh, uh, compute Fibonacci value of 12, that's 233. So that's in general um, a recursion in, in OCaml, and we've learned more about the functions, we don't have to have a return keyword for to ret return value, we don't have to use parentheses and things like that. Actually, there's another interesting thing about uh, recursion in OCaml. We can define, or we can declare what we call mutually recursive functions together. Mutually recursive functions are recursive functions that call one another. Yes, so more than one function that call one another and they are all recursive. If you look at my simple code here, um, I actually have, I'm sorry, a simple implementation, where is it? Yeah. No, don't do this to me. Yeah. What I have here is, here at the bottom, is um, a simple implementation of two mutually recursive functions. So I have let rec fun one of x, it matches x with, if it's zero, returns string zero. If it's not for any, any other value, then call fun two and notice now I'm declaring the two functions at the same time so that's recursive and say and fun two that's another function receives, receives a, uh, a parameter y and then matches y with if it's one then uh, return one as a string any other value call function one with y minus one so basically uh, the value will be subtracted until either zero or one gets returned yes these two functions will be calling each other fun one is calling fun two and fun two is calling fun one fun two here is also recursive because we we're defining we're declaring them uh, in the same context so let me copy and paste that into the top loop so it's telling me here that fun one receives an int and returns a string and fun two receives an int and returns a string so if I call it let's say fun one pass it value of three then three gets uh, subtracted here goes back there and goes back here until it reaches the value of 1 and then we get 1 printed out again if I call fun 2 then again it will actually um, of 4 for example it will do the same thing it's not 1 then it calls it with 
it cause fun one with three, three cause fun one, uh, fun two, fun two cause uh, fun one, and so on and so forth, and it actually reaches uh, one and then returns back one just to confirm that it actually works, and we could call fun one with zero, and we will get the zero from here, and we can actually call fun two with zero, but the zero will be actually minus one. So we'll have a problem because it actually go, it goes into an infinite loop and the values are not actually caught in my pattern. This is when we spoke about pattern matching and being exhaustive and non-exhaustive. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the value other than 1 which is minus 1, when it comes here, it, it will go into an infinite loop. I'm sorry, it is exhaustive but what happen is what will happen is it'll just keep subtracting, subtracting. It goes to it'll go to my minus infinity rather than actually uh, uh, being non-exhaustive, right? So thank you very much for watching. This is how we actually declare and use recursive functions in OCaml, as you have seen. And we spoke about the problem of my current implementation now of of, of the Fibonacci. I mentioned in the last video that we can actually uh, work around that and use a technique called memoization. Maybe in the next video. I'll explain how to do that and show you how to implement this more efficiently in OCaml. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you next time.